Okay, let's start working through Packet Tracer Activity 5.3.2.8, examining the ARP table. All right, so here's our network, <clears throat> and uh, we'll follow along here. We're going to start by opening up 172.16.31.3 right here. Now, remember the ARP table is kept on the local machine. So we're going to start by going to our command prompt, and we're going to issue the command ARP-D. And that's going to delete our existing ARP table. This will, let me throw this into simulation mode real quick. Okay, that'll pause things for a minute while we talk. The ARP table is kept on the local PCs. Remember, ARP is the address resolution protocol. It's technically the ARP cache. Uh, the ARP cache is kept here, and um, the ARP D removes it. Now, devices will automatically learn when they receive a message from another computer. They'll put an entry into the ARP table. Um, and then they, if they're looking for something they can't find in the ARP table or the ARP cache, they will uh, send out a broadcast in order to discover it. So we want to start by deleting what was already in there. Okay, now that we've got it there, we're in simulation mode, and we want to ping. Um, and I just realized I did this on the wrong machine. Oh, well. Let me open up 31. dot. Two, and I'm going to start by sliding this over, give myself enough room here. We'll go ahead and follow along with what they say and do it off of this computer. ARP D, and then we are going to ping 172.16.31.3, and we're going to minimize. Now, we are doing this from. Uh, or in simulation mode, so we can watch this take place one packet, one step at a time. So I'm going to start by looking at this ARP packet right here. And let me go ahead and do the outbound PDU details, and we'll look at it here. The preamble, the destination address, this is a broadcast. The source address, this is where we're coming from. And it's an ARP request. And we see the details of the ARP request right here. Our target is 172.30 or 16.31.3. So let's go ahead and advance this. And we'll see the switch because it's a broadcast. Floods are ARP, and that's the wrong ARP request. This is the one that we want. Okay. Floods are ARP request, and these two machines reject it because they're not 172.16.31.3. This one, however, gets it and is going to reply. Let's look at our outbound PDU details. And you'll see the source, the target MAC, the target IP address. That's who we're replying to. Here's the source. This is who we are. And so we are going to forward this and watch our reply come back. Now, remember, it went out as a broadcast. It comes back as a unicast. And it reached its destination. <clears throat> All right, and then we can track this through every step. And here's our ping request and our ping reply. Okay, and we can watch and see what happens all the way through. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to throw this into real-time mode so it will finish it off. Then I'm going to come back here and I want to view my ARP table and stop it back in simulation mode. And let's view our ARP table. So the way we view the ARP table is the command ARP, let me get to the right thing here, ARP dash A. And here we're going to see an entry for 172.16.31.3. Let's see if I can grab the whole thing. And the physical address and the fact that it's dynamic, which means we learned it. We didn't have it predefined for us. Okay, so we've seen the ARP packets go back and forth. We've seen how it added into the ARP table or the ARP cache, depending on what you want to call it, here on our switch. Now, the or here on our PC, I'm getting ahead of myself. The switch also has to, it doesn't do it with ARP, it uh, keeps a MAC address table. So let's get some additional traffic going on here. So I'm going to flip it back into real-time mode. Come back over to this PC. And let's ping 
172.16.31.4. We'll ping that one. And then we'll ping 10.10.10.2 from the command prompt. Whoops, I just probably had to look at this all the way through. Click 10.10.10.2. Go to our desktop and let's ping 10.10.10.3. Okay, so let's look at the MAC address table on the switches, and we've got two of them here. So I'm going to come to this switch, I'm going to go to the CLI, and let's make this a little wider so it's going to be easier to read. In, whoops, I don't have to do config T. I want to show MAC address table. And I could have shortened that down a little bit, but that's okay. Now, notice this one does not map IP addresses to MAC addresses. Instead, it maps MAC addresses to ports. And so at any point that we want to, we can go to a command prompt on a PC and show, or, or router for that matter, and show the ARP table, and it will show us the mappings that it has between PC and, um, or between IP address and MAC address. The switch, some similar process, not exact, similar process, does the show MAC address table, or we use a show MAC address table, and that will show us every time or every mapping between a port and a particular MAC address. Okay. <clears throat> so, this next step here is using remote communication. Um, and I'm going to let you work through that, but I will tell you there's going to be something that's going to be a little bit different. When we did this before, we ran a ping from here to here and then from here to here. So we stayed on the local network. And so the MAC address aligned with the IP address. Um, I'll let you explore this one. This is in part three, where we do something similar. We go here and we ping a remote network. And what's going to happen, and I'll let you explore it, but what's going to happen is ARP is not going to try to determine the destination MAC address is going to try to determine the MAC address for our default gateway. And then the uh, ICMP request will have as its destination IP address the remote device and as its destination MAC address our local gateway. So go through the same thing here in uh, part three. Uh, ART minus A to display it, ART minus D to clear it. Um, walk through the process, look at the packets, and you should have everything you need to know to discover not only how MAC addresses and IP addresses work in local communication, but in remote communication as well.